This video is going to look at how to read your PDFs that you download from the internet. You can read them by saving them to other apps that uh, can read PDFs like Adobe Reader or Good Reader, which are a couple of apps that will do it. There are more. Or you can read it in iBooks. And the, this video will concentrate on actually how to send a, a PDF that you download from a website to iBooks and actually set up your reading uh, experience on the iBook, creating folders and working your way through all the different options. So here I have a website. This is the my website, which has a collection of PDFs on it uh, that all relate to the pages. So in, uh, if you're a beginner in the iPad, there's a, a whole series of pages there with different tutorials and information on how to use the iPad at a beginner level. And most of those pages have a PDF that accompany that page. And they're all uh, installed, if you like, on this page, which is the downloads page of that website. And you can download them all and, and put them somewhere to read them. So as a, an example, let's, have, uh, let's just go through what you might do with a PDF. And I have done another video. If you look in the description, you can see the other video on how to download a PDF and into Adobe Reader and then what you can do with it from there. But just as an example, let's just take one PDF. So I'm going to open that link, which will open this PDF in Safari. All right, so the PDF's been opened in Safari. And uh, if I want to, I can just read it from there and scroll through and it works perfectly well from there. Uh, but if I want to, to look at that again, yes, I can keep Safari open and hope that I don't suddenly uh, close down the link. So if I tap that cross, that tab is gone and with it, with it goes the PDF. Or I can save this PDF in something else. So tapping the screen gives me this open in. It's got to be quick because it disappears. I can open it in uh, another app. So I might open it in Adobe Reader or Good Reader because either of those can read PDFs and there's other apps too. So any, if any app that's installed on my iPad that is capable of reading a PDF will appear in this open in option. So there's quite a few that can uh, read them or do something with them. And it depends what you want to do. So I could open it in the Kindle app as well, because that will read them also. Um, so this, in this case, we're just going to for an example, open it in Adobe Reader. And so the, the Safari app is closed, Adobe Reader is open, and this document is now available to read in Adobe Reader. Tapping the top there gives me a whole series of tools. For example, I could do some editing of, of that app with a, a highlighting tool. I might you know, draw things on it, do arrows on it in the freehand drawing, uh, strike out some text if I don't think it's very useful, strike out some text so you can do all sorts of stuff with your PDFs in that way. Uh, and putting them into iBooks will not allow you to do any of this annotation. It'll just let you read them um, in going back here. So in Adobe Reader, for example, if I went back to the document library, I have, a, I have all of them saved there. So there's a list of all the PDFs that I've downloaded. And the, the problem with this is it's just not organized too well. You have to really remember what they're called and uh, where to find it. In, in, um, I'd like another way of maybe of creating some folders for them, similar to how the website has, has set them up so I can find them again. Uh, so Adobe Reader, Good Reader, I would use those to edit and annotate the PDFs and then maybe save them back to uh, iBooks. So let's go back to Safari and look at another way uh, or how to actually put them into iBooks. Two ways you can get them into iBooks. One of them is to use this sharing button up here and email it, email the PDF to myself. So I'll do that and come back to that one later and look at how we uh, get it in from emailing. So I'm emailing this, the link to that actual uh, document. So I'm gonna email that to myself. Let's see how that one works a bit later. So that one's gone off. The other way is to open it in iBooks. Now it already gives me that as the first option. Let's just pick that. I'm going to open this 
uh, PDF into iBooks. So I've just got to find where iBooks is here. And so this one will, will switch again straight to the iBooks app and open up the iBooks app and open up the PDF ready to read. And so I've got the, the option of scrolling through the different pages. There's five pages in, in this PDF. I can do it that way. I can select from the bottom, if I tap the bottom there, there's all the different five pages there. So I can pick them this way and go, and go through the five pages that way. I can tap that one, which will give me all five pages in a multi-page view to get back to where I was, resume. And whilst you're in the multi-page view, you've got the option of looking at a table of contents. So if you wanted to find the different uh, steps, if you like, in this PDF or the different uh, options, the different content, uh, this will give you a, a sort of, it's more, not as specific as an index. But if I wanted to see this bit, change the default font, it will take me to that page. And it's looking at the actual title there, subheading, if you like, of this PDF, which is a, a fairly good way of of finding information in it. And if I wanted to bookmark it, so I'm going back to that and I wanted to make sure that I come back to that page, I can hit the bookmark and bookmark that page. And then when I'm back here and I want to look at all the bookmark pages, it will just show me the pages that I've bookmarked. So they're your reading options. You've also got the ability to change the screen brightness of that page, to search for a page number or a word in here. So I might search for page Three. page number three so it gives me the page number I can go quickly to something in that way uh, the only sharing your option you have in iBooks is email or prints but you need your reading options in in um, iBooks if I wanted to this to go back and annotate this one uh, I have to I'd have to email it to myself and then send it back to Adobe reader which we look at a bit later but there's no other way but let's go back to the library because you want to be able to in, I, in iBooks the whole purpose of putting them into iBooks in my opinion is to organize them because otherwise I may as well leave them in Adobe Reader or Good Reader it does the same thing in iBooks if I tap the store it's going to take me to the iBook store where I can purchase uh, books ebooks uh, and that's not what I want. I'm not after buying any books at the moment. I just want to uh, organize my PDF. So go back to the library and go to collections because these are the different things you can look at, the different views of iBooks that you can look at. I have some books that I've actually bought from the iBook store and they're all sitting there. So I can read those by going to collections or I can look at my PDFs. At the moment, I've only got one PDF. But if we go, go back to Safari and have a look at the actual website where this comes from, go back here. And if I wanted to organize my iBooks collection like the PDFs were organized on this page or have, have them in groups so that I could find them, I could create a folder for cloud services, documents and files. Uh, this, the one which was how to use the notes app came out of pre-installed app. So uh, I'm going to download another one just so we can have two in there. So just one called install Dropbox. There's another PDF from the same website. And I'm gonna open that one in iBooks also. Go back to library. So I've now got two of them there. And as you can see, if we leave them like that, they're really hard to, to, to find. Uh, I do want to create the folders. So to do that, I mean, the other way of looking at them is before we do that, we're in the grid view at the moment, grid view. There is looking at them as a list, uh, bookshelf, titles, authors. It's not very useful, I think. Go back to the grid view. Nice little picture, but I still can't see what they are. So to create a folder, tap the collections button, hit the new, 
and I'm going to create a folder. One of them for the Dropbox file will be for cloud services. So anything I find as a PDF to do with cloud storage will go in there. And the other one is on the iPad pre-installed, the apps that come with it. So I want two folders. And tap that again. Now I'm going to put these two uh, documents into the correct folder, and I can't read them. The first one is the Dropbox one. So this is the one that's going into the cloud services. So I'm going to do an edit. Select the actual PDF. Tap Move. And I'm going to put that one into the cloud services. So it's gone straight away into the cloud services. So in, we go back and have a look at cloud services. That's the, the folder that's selected. And look at that PDF, that's the Dropbox one. And the one we've got left, we go back to collections, look at the PDFs. The one that's left is the Notes app, and I want to move that one into a pre installed folder. So we go back to the library, edit, select what I want to move, move that into the pre installed apps, and then go back to collections. So in the PDFs, there's nothing there because they've both been moved into their own folder. So in the cloud services, it's a Dropbox one, and into the pre-installed apps, it's the Notes one. Now it's a way of organizing them, keeping them and organizing them. Particularly if you start to get huge collections of them, um, they're much more easy to find. Now the other way of getting the app in was to, to get it in from email. So let's go back to the mail and into Gmail. And what I should have is this one, this message here was the one I just sent, which will send me to a link back to that page where I can then open it in iBooks. So it's another way. You might find a, a, a PDF on the on the internet and you just send yourself a link to that page if you're not able to actually see it within the browser. Personally, I think the best way is just to open the PDF within Safari and then send it straight to the actual app. Um, within iBooks, if I wanted to annotate, so download the um, a PDF, put it into iBooks. So let's just pick up this one and open it. Uh, if I wanted to then annotate it and edit it, I have to send it back to, and the only way I'm going to be able to send it back is to, again, email it to myself. So it actually attaches the PDF this time and send it to myself. Let's see how we get it into, back to um, Adobe Reader. I'll just change that from the iBooks. So email that, which is sending the actual documents to my email. And then I want to, from there, open it and send it back to Adobe Reader to annotate. All right, here's the actual message and this one you can see actually has a paper clip so the PDF is attached to it uh, and if I tap that it's going to download the PDF into the mail app and then I can send it to Adobe so there's sort of two ways you can send yourself a PDF by email you can just send yourself the link or you can actually uh, attach the PDF as a, as a file and send that in an email to yourself. And from there, you can open it in any app you want. This one's opened in, in um, Adobe Reader. And, and if, you, if you need to edit and annotate, then this is the simplest tool to use. The other one to use is Goodreader. And Adobe Reader, there really isn't much you can do in terms of organization. They all just go in in alphabetical order. And if you're going to get a lot of PDFs, so if you were to download all the PDFs from that, that technology-fueled website, 
there's a lot of them and it's going to become quite difficult to find and sort 